speak now in the name of the one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When Molly was a little baby and Gabby was two years old, I was serving a church that had a large preschool so they could take my little girls during the day. We lived in church property that was across the street from the church and school, and so every day I was able to bundle little baby Molly into her little baby carrier and walk with Gabby up the street on the way to school. During that walk, we had so many imaginative, wonder-filled times. I remember times when it was cold outside and we would see our breath and imagine the clouds turning into mysterious creatures or see the sunlight glistening through the trees or the flowers poking up out of the ground. It was a two block walk that was so amazing. I remember thinking I wanted to freeze it, to stop it, to hold on to that moment forever. Of course, that wasn't possible. And of course, if we froze that moment and kept life just the way it was in that wonderful baby toddler time, I wouldn't have gotten to see them grow and continue to become the people God meant for them to be. But it is so tempting to wish that time would stand still when we experience moments of grace, moments of awe, moments of wonder that are God-filled, moments that change us. I think we witness something of one of those moments in our gospel reading from today, this famous story of transfiguration. In this story, Peter and James and John and Jesus are hiking up a mountain. I imagine it being at the beginning a hike like any other. I bet they were tired. I bet they grew thirsty. I bet they were dirty. I bet Jesus seemed just like one of them. And if another traveler walked right by them, they wouldn't have known that anything was different about Jesus at all. A regular, ordinary old guy. But when they got to the top of that mountain, something profound, something amazing happened. Something changed. Jesus was transfigured before them, and he shone radiantly. He was changed completely from the inside out, as if suddenly they could see on the outside of Jesus something that represented who he was, who he is on the inside. The text tells us that his clothes were radiant, brilliant white, brighter than any bleach could ever make them. And there stood two extraordinary People who were so close to God and God was so close to them, Elijah and Moses. And in that moment, Peter, that fantastic friend of Jesus, Peter tried to build some booths. I don't know what it was that was going through Peter's mind in that moment. Scripture tells us that Peter was terrified, but I think Peter was also filled with awe at this holy, extraordinary mountaintop experience, and he wanted to hold on to it, like a mother, like I did, with hold, wanting to hold on to special sacred times with my babies. I think Peter wanted to mark that occasion to freeze it, to take a picture in a way, to hold on to it, to try and get a grasp on it, even as he was terrified, because he could tell that this was a moment of extraordinary holiness. But the moment for Peter it did not last long because just as soon as he declared that he wanted to build these booths to mark that occasion to try to keep that mountaintop experience in place for a little while, a cloud came over them. As is so often the case in scripture when God is present, a cloud covers the people and they heard a voice declaring that Jesus is the beloved one. And then in that cloud, they had to descend down the mountain. So often in life, we want to hold on to those moments of wonder, moments of mystery, those mountaintop experiences. But we, we cannot see the ways of God all the time. Instead, when God is present with us, God doesn't have us hold on, attaching to those extraordinary times but moves us in ways when we can't quite see the direction we are going in. The way of walking with God is a bit cloudy and we don't really know what it's all about. So all we can do is be present with God. Those disciples covered in a cloud, not really knowing what was going on, wishing they could hold on to that mountaintop 
when for just a moment, Jesus, as Jesus is, was clear to them. They had no choice but to descend the mountain back into life, back into the ministry of healing and teaching, back into the life that would eventually lead Jesus to death upon the cross and then to resurrection. They didn't really know the way, they didn't really know what was going on, but the holiest way was to be present in that obscurity, present in that unknown reality of God, and to trust. To me, this is an invitation to be present. For once, not to try and figure out the way forward, figure out the way that God is going, analyze our lives, which is something I love to do. I love to be so organized and so efficient and plan so well that I can try to figure out and steer things, which does serve me well at times, but like a mother who wants to capture a moment with her babies, we know that certain moments, certain mountaintop experiences cannot last forever, but God is with us. We cannot attach to believing that we know one way forward. We cannot attach ourselves to thinking that we can ever figure it out, ever figure everything about God out. But we can allow ourselves to enter into the cloud of unknowing and to be present with Christ, Christ who is of love. I invite you now, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, wherever you're worshiping, this moment, take a breath. Allow the indwelling spirit of God to rise up within you. Let go of whatever ideas you have that you think you need to hold on to in order to move forward in whatever it is your life is looking at right now and just be. Be present with the God who walked with Peter and James and John in that cloudy time down from the mountain. Be present with God who is present with you always and forever. Allow yourselves to trust, to let go, to be. Amen.